not working? Can everyone hear me okay? No? Oh, there we go. Okay. Good evening, everyone. If we could ask everyone in the lobby to please take their seat, we're going to get started today. So good evening. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the Town of Paradise monthly community information meeting. My name is Valerie Rudiman. This is Lindsay Steinberg and, uh, Steinberg, and on top is Kate Bratin, and we are with Blue Flamingo, and we are proud to be your town's uh, communication team. So thank you all so much for being here this evening. And before we get started, I'd like to just introduce a few guests we have. First Mayor Jody Jones is here. We have Vice Mayor Greg Bolin. Council members Melissa Schuster, Council member Mike Zuccalillo, and Council member Steve Crowder. So let's give them all that round of applause. Okay, so format for tonight is as follows. Um, each agency that you see here will provide a five to 10 minute update for you. We have 13 presenters tonight. So with that case, we are gonna have them follow back to back. After everyone is completed, we are going to ask to give them just a couple minutes to return back to the tables out in the lobby. And at that point, we invite all of you to reach out and connect with each agency that you have specific questions with, and they will help you out at that time. Um, and then the question and answer period, depending on how long we go tonight, is till about 8 p.m. tonight. So goal is to get everyone, all your questions answered, and get you home this evening. So with that, we're going to first introduce Town of Paradise Town Manager Lauren Gill. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I don't know if I could keep this to five to ten minutes. Once I start talking about the town, I usually go on and on. There's so much, so much information to share with everyone. Um, the town is working on many fronts. We're still in disaster recovery um, until all the debris is off the ground, the standing burnt trees are removed. Um, but we're also moving into our long-term recovery projects, and that is the exciting part. That's where we get to see the rebuilding begin. And this is based on the projects that the community um, vision and the community had voted uh, for us to work on. So we're very proud of our residents that we've gone this far this quickly. Um, let me just touch on our rebuild progress. We have 223 applications in for new homes um, currently today and that is very very exciting i don't know if you've been to town hall but they ring a bell every time a new application is received um, let's see what else we're doing we're working with the fire safe council and cal fire to help property owners to keep their lots free of weeds and vegetation um, debris because we certainly don't want to have a lot of fire issues when we're going into um, this next fire season. Uh, so if you're not living in town or if you have a lot next to you and the people are not in town, uh, please let them know that we are hoping that the debris, the, um, the, the weeds and the vegetation will be taken care of by the property owners. Um, we are in the process of getting another code enforcement person on our team, so that will help us a little bit with that job. The zone captains um, are also helping us with that, getting that word out. Um, we are working on the Bank of America building, so where are we on our building resource center? Right now, uh, we have some inspections that were just completed today on the building. We'll do some minor repair and modifications to that building. We're getting some donations for furniture and um, a grant for some computers. And our target date for opening is as soon as possible. I don't know when that will be. Okay, so mandatory abatement process. This is for debris removal on the property. You'll see that there are several lots yet that have not had the debris removed. Some of those lots are still in the, prog uh, the process. Soils testing is taking quite a bit of time. As you all know, the labs are inundated. But uh, the town actually has 100 parcel 
owners that have not selected either the state program or a private contractor to remove their debris. We just sent a letter out today. We did a courtesy call, and then what we'll do is start the formal abatement process where we'll send them a formal letter. We will um, perhaps have to have a hearing and maybe go to the judge and get permission to go on the property and remove that. But we will make sure that all the debris is removed in town as soon as possible. Standing burned trees. I'm going to leave that lovely topic for someone else in the group. I'm looking right at uh, FEMA and Cal OES. I'm, we've been working with them um, almost daily. They're, they're tired of that, but um, they're making progress. The town is also trying to work to get the green waste yard open again at least a couple of days a week. Uh, the problem with that is because NRWS can't handle that for us anymore and provide that service for us, that will cost us about $40,000 a month. That's not in our budget. So before we go back to the council with that, we're trying to work with our um, insurance and other avenues to hopefully get our green waste yard open again. We're working on that as soon as possible. I did hear some good news from the county, though, and I'll let Casey Hatcher from the county update us on on that, but I think there is a separate line for residents going to the Neil uh, Road landfill. Okay, Waddles, the Waddles on the uh, streets covering the DIs. That was part of a major town-wide, actually a campfire-wide erosion control program that was done for the um, state SWIP program. It was something that requ were required by law to do. What we're hoping is to have all the wattles removed by the rainy season because with the debris removal program, erosion control is placed on private properties. So hopefully we'll get the wattles out of the street, clean out the DIs, and um, be able to get those street sweepers in there and, and clean our streets. I know that we've had many questions about cleaning the town, removing you know, all the sign debris, and the trash in the, in the roads and along the side the roadways. We've had our zone captains go pick up some trash in the street. We have our Love Paradise group going out and doing the same thing, I think, this Sunday. And everyone is welcome to, to um, join in on that. But um, I did have a question about what else is Public Works doing right now? And they have 100 miles of public roads to maintain. They have been doing a lot of cold patch on the roads because of the damage from the, the trucks. So they're trying to keep our roads together. They are now working on sign inventory. So not just for the regulatory signs, the stop signs, the yield signs, but also the street signs. We do do uh, the street signs for the public roads. We'll soon be getting those back up. The private roads are the um, responsibility of the private road owners, um, unfortunately. So that might be a claim um, either for your insurance or for um, PG&E. Uh, let's see, what else do I have for you? Um, the town council is going to have its regular town council meeting next Tuesday night. In the future, we will do these meetings on the first Tuesday of the month and our council meetings on the second Tuesday of the month. This is kind of acting as our second council meeting so that we won't have all the report outs at our council meeting. We will have the report outs here. We are doing this to find a way to provide as much information to as many people as possible. So thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. And with that, I will sit down and let the next speaker come up. Oh, our favorite, our police chief, Eric Reimbold. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. I am Eric Reimbold, your Paradise Police Chief. I don't uh, anticipate speaking 10 minutes, but I wanted to give you a brief update on the police department and the current law enforcement activity in the town. Um, as many of you may have seen last night on the news, we're excited to announce that we've hired a new police officer yesterday, Brock Stratton. Um, he comes to us with years of correctional 
experience from working in the jail and the courts, and we're excited to get him in the training program. The police department is actively recruiting lateral police officers with experience to fill current vacancies after the campfire. Uh, since the new recruitment incentive was approved last council meeting, we have experienced some interest from lateral officers within our region. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to um, get those officers to apply and start backgrounds and get them hired as soon as possible. Uh, we are dedicated to filling the vacancies in a timely manner to ensure that we have adequate staffing to continue to serve the needs of the community. Our officers continue to focus their efforts on theft-related calls, narcotics violations, traffic enforcement, and other quality of life issues that affect the community. Our patrol officers are gonna receive some additional training from the CHP commercial truck enforcement team, and we want our officers to be able to recognize some of the common safety hazards so that we make sure our roads remain safe. The department wants to remind our citizens that we are still experiencing some theft-related issues in our community. So secure your tools, construction equipment, and your materials to the best of your abilities. Consider whatever security measures you think are appropriate and possibly transport your tools and equipment with you to and from your property and job sites. Uh, we recently had a meeting with the zone captains. There was about 15 members that met with the police department staff. We're working on our relationship and community um, outreach with them because there are a large number of people that subscribe to the Facebook page and we can get information to and from the community that way. Um, additionally, we encourage the community participation by reporting suspicious activity, people or vehicles. If it doesn't look right to you, call us. We would rather go out and investigate it and find out it's nothing uh, than to have something uh, bad happen or somebody get property stolen from them. And I'll be available after the meeting to address any specific concerns. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Danielle Newsom, Assistant Director of Public Health for Butte County and Lead for Debris Removal Division. I wanted to share with you some overall statistics for Phase 2 Debris Removal, which is the mandatory debris removal program. Currently, we have 12,632 properties that are enrolled into a Phase 2 Debris Removal program. And of those, 4,784 are finalized clean. The state's portion of that, and just to give a little history, the county is partnered with Cal OES for the state operations and that the county has opened and oversees the ROE program, which I know many of you have been to, at Mira Loma. And we also then receive the final sign-offs and environmental health signs off on those and make sure they get back to the property owners. The state currently has received 11,779 ROEs. They have removed structural debris over 9,000 properties and have sent 3,926 final sign-offs to Butte County. The alternative program is the private program uh, that is run through environmental health. And to date, we have 1,695 properties participating in that program and have had finalized 858 properties. The important thing that I want to highlight tonight is that as we're getting to final sign-offs, it's going to be really important that everybody reaches out to the ROE Center that is in the state program and make sure that we have your correct mailing address. We've been getting a little percentage of mail back, and so it's going to be really important that you update that information. You can also reach out to the ROE Center once you've seen on the public-facing map that your final sign-off has been returned to the county and request your FSO to be sent to you via email, or you can go to 202 Miraloma at the ROE Center and pick it up in person as well. We have, the county has conducted outreach. There were 59 properties in the county or unincorporated areas that were not participating in the mandatory phase two program, and environmental health conducted outreach that was completed last week, and we believe we have that down to the 49. Um, at which point we'll start doing some kind of abatement process as well, um, similar to what Lauren just, excuse me, reported for the town, to make sure that we have everything in order to Chapter 53, as well as the town ordinance, make sure all hazards are removed. 
Uh, I just want to remind everybody that there is the public facing map. If you're participating in the state's program for debris removal, you can go to ButteCountyRecovers.org and go to maps. And the consolidated map, you can plug your, either your assessor's parcel number or your address in, and you can see exactly where you're at in your, that process. And if you're in the property in the alternative program, you can go to that same ButteCountyRecovers.org and use the e-track it under debris removal to see what progress your property is making in the alternative program. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Casey Hatcher with Butte County, and I will definitely not take five to 10 minutes. Um, I just have a few items that I wanna update you about. Um, just as Town Manager Lauren Gill mentioned, the county has also submitted a request to Cal OES for um, a tree removal program that would assist with removing trees uh, that affect, affect the public right of ways. So we look forward to um, seeing how that progresses. The county does have um, a program now to remove trees in the right of way and has finished assessing all of the trees and 6,700 of them are slated for removal. The county's issued um, and will take on August 13th to the Board of Supervisors um, an agenda item for them to award the bid to start removing trees in the Butte Creek Canyon. So that tree removal effort for trees in the right of way is separated into five zones and the first one is in the Butte Creek Canyon. So we look forward to that work moving forward. Also at the board's next meeting on August 13th, they will consider awarding um, a contract to fix the upper section of Centerville Road to make sure that that road section can reopen. We know we've heard community concern about that being a fire evacuation route um, and wanna make sure that the, uh, the repair to that road moves forward. As um, Lauren Gill mentioned, the Neal Road Recycling and Waste Facility uh, does accept green and wood waste. And I had heard some questions or concerns that folks were worried that they had to wait in the long line of trucks that was going in um, to, in the afternoons, uh, dump the state fire debris and ash. They go into a separate entrance. So while you may have to wait in a little bit of traffic on Neal Road, if you're um, taking regular um, municipal solid waste or green and wood waste to Neal Road, um, you go just in the main entrance, not the same entrance as the debris trucks. So that is, that is certainly uh, debris that is accepted there, and we ask for that to be separated um, because it doesn't go into the landfill, it goes into the green and wood waste pile. Also wanted to mention that on um, August 13th board meeting, the board will also be considering amendments to um, the uh, section of our code that allows for log decks for the processing of trees that are removed that were burned in the campfire. Um, they're going to be considering amendments that would allow processing on those sites to assist with the removal of those hazard trees. So they'll consider that on um, next Tuesday morning. We have some staff here from Butte County's building division. They'll be available uh, after to answer questions uh, about any building permits. We've received approximately 100 permits in, um, for rebuilding in the unincorporated area. We've issued about 40 of those now, finaled one of them. So congratulations to uh, those folks for being back in their home. We uh, want to report that our plan check review process is at three weeks. So we encourage folks to submit permits, um, come in, ask questions, uh, and get that process going. And then also wanted to mention um, that we are so very appreciative of the town for inviting us to be located at the brick in the Bank of America building when that opens. We think it's really important to have a local office here on the ridge uh, where people in Megalia and Paradise Pines and the Upper Ridge can come submit building permits and, and do that work that they'd otherwise have to come to Oroville for. So we're really excited to be, to be part of that and we'll be in the back uh, to answer questions. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm uh, David San Diego. I am um, the uh, FEMA official here for um, this um, disaster. 
I am the, the lead federal official for the recovery and response efforts here in Paradise. So um, tonight I would like to focus um, my, um, uh, my, my time to talk about housing. And I'd like to talk about housing and where we are. I'd like to break it down into three lines of effort. Um, the first line of effort is we have um, RV commercial parks outside of the Burn Scar area. And we have 17 of those um, throughout Northern California. The second line of effort um, that we have is the, the group sites. Those are sites that we build from the ground up. Those are vacant uh, pieces of land that, that, that we uh, lease or acquire, and we build them from, the, from scratch, and then we put um, uh, some housing units on there. And the, last, and the last line of effort that I would like to talk about is the commercial RV parks within the Burn Scar area. So let's go back to the first line of effort. So those are the 17 uh, RV parks, and they're, they, they're between uh, uh, very close to here and almost 100 miles away. And we have over 300 uh, families in those RV parks throughout uh, Northern California. And next, we have the group sites. We have four group sites. Um, three are built. Um, the first one that came online was the one in, in Rosewood. Uh, which is outside of Oroville, and that has uh, 40 uh, families in there. The next one that come online is uh, Silver Dollar Fairgrounds, and that uh, just outside of Chico, that has 60 families. We just finished uh, the Gridley group sites, and that has about 300 um, um, uh, trailers in there at this point in time. We're in the process of moving families in there, and as of this evening, we have about 60 uh, 